Hi guys, how's it going? Can everyone hear me? Is everyone in the house? Hello, hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm a little low there, am I? Well, hey, let me just go up a little bit on that and then we should be able to be okay. How are you? I hope everyone's okay today. Busy day, busy day. Oh, somebody in the house already. Can you believe that? So, Soren from Sweden, how are you? So excited to see you. Who have we got? Michael. Michael, how are you? Michael, were you here before? Yes, you were. I think you were. I'm sure you were. Yeah, I can't remember. So we've got Mike and we've got Soren. A Soren. Soren, Soren, Soren. How <laughs> should we pronounce that? I've no idea. Um, you're in good shape, Mr. Gunderson. Thank you. That's great to hear. And Sweden. My goodness, it must be cold up there. It's bitterly cold here. I can't believe it. We've got those north winds coming down on us. And I'm frozen. Absolutely frozen. It's good to have my Swedish compadre in here. You know, I got the DNA done um, with one of those ancestry things there a couple of months ago. And apparently one third of me is Scandinavian. The good third. <laughs> oh, you're from Los Angeles. And who do we have? Austin, Texas in the house. Randall. Randall? Randall or Randall? How's it going? It's great to see you guys. I'm so glad you're here. You're more than welcome. So happy days. Have you guys been, you, sorry, my chat is down here. So that's why I have to face them when I'm talking to them. So you'll excuse me while I'm looking down here. I should be looking straight on, but I can't, you know, do the, 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 that lizard thing <laughs> to the eyes. Anyway, um, were you guys here before? We're 85 degrees on Tuesday, 25 degrees today. Oh, my heart bleeds for you, Randall. You know, my heart just goes out to you. You poor thing. How you must be suffering. Sucking back on all those margaritas and enjoying all that heat. Well, me and Svorn, Soren from Sweden are putting the long johns on, huddling around the fire, keeping well, you know. Anyway, this week, people, I don't know if you've been, have you guys been in here before? Have you done this uh, webinar before? So this webinar is brought to you by, <laughs> I was here the last time, yes. So that's, oh, good man. So what we've been looking at is this thing called Wave Lab Cast, right? And Wave Lab Cast is an iteration of Wave Lab. If you've ever heard of that, there's Wave Lab Pro and, you know, there's a few versions of it. But Wave Lab Cast is an iteration of the mothership, if you will. <laughs> and the other, um, we've got somebody from Morocco. <gasps> OMG. Listen, this, this is purely international, lads. Loving this. What's the weather like? I'd say you're beating 85 degrees in Morocco, are you? Anyway, um, so Wave Lab Cast, amazing little toy. We've been going over it and the functions of it and how to use it and playing with it for the past few months. OK, and this webinar is us in there in the chat and myself. And we just go through different aspects of it now. If you've missed any of the shows, they're all up on the Wave Lab um, channel on the Steinberg. Uh, okay, on the Wave Lab channel, yeah, on Steinberg on YouTube, right? So you're looking for Steinberg, you find the Wave Lab channel, you'll find us in there giving the webinar thing about the whole Wave Lab cast. So, what's great about why are we specifically talking about Wave Lab cast? Well, Pro user here since version four. Randall's all over it. He's all over it like a bad rash. You know what I mean? So if you have any questions, just direct them towards Randall. <laughs> no pressure, man. Um, so what was I going to say to you? Yeah, so basically we're in here looking at this um, and we're looking at different aspects of it, right? So the thing about Wave Lab Cast is, right, and the, the whole idea behind it was to pair everything back okay so people that want to go and produce their first podcast or they want to work on some content or they want to do a bit of sound a picture and they kind of never done that before or 
they're only dipping their toe in or even for the professionals that want to get stuff done real quick okay so imagine I was doing a super hyper quick edit on a VO I can lash it in here straight away snip 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 done out you know so it's a really quick workflow in this version of Wavelab whereas Wavelab Pro has loads more bells and whistles and stuff like that just to get stuff done in the pro world for mastering and all sorts of brilliant stuff right the thing about Wavelab cast is because it's got that mind to the non-professional let's say right um there's loads of functions in the background under the hood if you will that it does um without you having to worry about all the bells and the whistles and the knobs and the faders and the flashing lights and all that sort of stuff that you'd see generally in loads of pro gear okay so you don't need to be worrying about that so if you go back to the last show okay we were looking at editing and we're looking at the track inspector now the track inspector is amazing on this in that it does so much under the hood okay and it doing all that work for you allows, frees you up to you know focus on your content and what's going on in your show okay so now I'm sitting down I'm a CEO or I'm a boss and I want to talk to my clients by means of a podcast I've never done sort of audio editing or audio mixing or anything like that before. But Wavelab Cast is sitting in the background there, ready to go. And it allows you focus more on your content and getting a, a really good sounding show out. Okay. Um, because it does so much work in the background. Okay. So that's what the whole Wavelab Cast thing is about. Okay. And we'll just be tipping away you know show by show and by show okay Steinberg you oh, Michael oh, they're all they're all upmanship here you know uh, pro user here since version 4 oh really I was a Steinberg user since 1992 oh yeah I think we'll get <laughs> I think there'll be a bit of fisty cuffs later maybe I don't know um, so oh yeah where do you get this uh, I might as well show you where am I I'm looking at this <laughs> got so much stuff going on here man unbelievable okay i got on my browser Ta -da! what have we got here we have ourselves the steinberg site okay and in there if you go to more products and you can see all products okay up here and then go to all products and you'll be able to find wave lab cast okay so by you clicking on there you'll find the wave lab cast site and here it is and the reason I'm pointing you towards this is because you'll get loads of information on it, okay? And of course, you can buy it straight away or dun, 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 you can download a, a trial version. And the trial version is the full, full blown version. Uh, there's no smaller LE version or light version of Wave Livecast. Everything you need is in the one package okay you can buy wave lab cast straight away um and there's also if you buy some hardware um from yamaha from zoom you'll get a free version of it with your hardware which is brilliant nothing like something for free i'm always man for bang for the book you know what i mean so it's all good so what i thought we'd sit down and talk about this week and uh, what I do is, uh, apart from my day job, um, which is I'm a recording and I'm a sound engineer for the past too many thousand years and I work in film and I work in TV and I work in um, game and I work in all sorts of aspects of the business. Um, I also educate. I, I, I lecture in universities around the country and stuff. But one of the, the things I do as well is I go out and I help um, individuals. So they'll ring me up and say, Keith, listen, I'm completely lost with A, B, C and D. Or how do I how do I get sound from a microphone into a thing? What do you think of this USB microphone? Would this be good for my podcast? You know, and I kind of give them advice on that. And I found um, one of the major hurdles for an awful lot of people and I'm seeing it more and more 
and more with more and more people thinking that all I have to do is buy a USB microphone, plug it in and the next thing is I'm there. I can do a podcast. I can do a show. I can do this, that, the other. And um, to be honest with you, at best, you know, I think there's something like 600,000 podcasts out there in the world in numerous languages. And uh, I'd say the upper echelons sound great. They're put together professionally. They're, they're really working well. But so many of them are not, <laughs> basically. They've really bad sound. They're doing their interviews wrong. They're taking audio from anywhere and everywhere. They're putting all these shows together, cobbling it together. You know, grabbing a bit here, maybe take a bit of Zoom audio, maybe, I don't know, recording it in their bathroom or their kitchen or something like that. It doesn't help that you see these adverts for beautiful microphones that people are selling and stuff and they've got the miles down here and they go, oh, you know, this beautiful model doing, you know, the, 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 the pose in front of the microphone and all these glorious pictures from these manufacturers and the USB microphones 17 feet away from their mouths, you know, you don't get the proper response that you should get from a microphone at that distance so it doesn't help when people are seeing this kind of thing do you know and if you don't know anything about it if i jumped on a horse tomorrow i'm gonna fall off 50 times because i know nothing about climbing a horse or climbing a horse mounting a horse or whatever the term is right and the same goes for anyone that's doing audio do you know there's so much there that you could be considering Okay, and that's why we're here tonight. We're here to consider an awful lot of aspects. And one of the aspects of getting a podcast together for your clients, for getting a podcast together with an audience that you want to attract, or we've talked about it before, whatever your bag is, and you want to put a podcast together just to communicate with like minded people. There's an awful lot uh, of stuff you need to consider even before you start editing and putting together your podcast and putting it out there. Okay? So that's what we're here for. And that's what the previous shows have been here for. To give you a dig out to help you with getting the cleanest audio, getting the cleanest work done, nice clean audio, nice clean music, nice edits, checking the pace of your audio okay we'll be going back to editing dialogue to get you know that interview a little snappier you know a little bit more tight you know cutting down on time cutting down on uh, padding that you don't need even though you're aiming for a specific time we'll look at all that again okay we've tipped into it before we've done a bit you know, on the second show, we did more on the fourth show, I think. And now we're going to look at a completely different aspect because it's so important. So many people are coming up to me and asking me about this. And we're going to be dealing with remote recording. OK, so since the pandemic, we've all heard these shows. We've from contributors on national broadcasters news shows um, all over the TV, but especially podcasts and radio shows and stuff, right? There is such little consideration for what you're about to do. Okay. And I understand that because you've got a script to get through. You got the content to get through. You got to record the whole thing, you know, even before you put your show together. OK, I always say, you know, if you're in a situation, imagine you're recording in a specific situation. I record in a big hall. OK, what I would do is I would personally go in and record my dialogue in this big hall. I'd come out of the hall and listen back to the recording just to hear what sort of response. And is it acceptable? OK, the same thing goes for 
um, how you go about recording your remote um, interviews and for your contributors because there's a whole consideration there for them as well okay so I want you to take yourself out of sitting down panic we have the interview on at one o'clock with Mr. Bloggs you know let's just get a zoom open lash it down lash it into wave labcast we'll edit it there we'll put it out there's a podcast boom and everyone's going oh he's getting wi-fi dropouts there's noise all over the place he's actually sitting in the middle of a cafe in the middle of i don't know bangkok with all that traffic lashing by pity we didn't have a conversation with him beforehand as to where he could be sitting and what equipment he could be using okay and we'll go through all of that now okay and if you've any questions okay throw them into the chat let me know you're there wave to me occasionally you know what I mean it just gives me a little flutter of excitement you know what I mean <laughs> so um the one thing and and I wanted to start with and it's probably predominantly what we should be talking about I'll go back to Wave Lab Cast in a minute okay because the majority of what I need to talk about tonight isn't in here at all when we get the decent recordings and we bring them into Wave Lab Cast to do our final edit then yeah absolutely we'll lash through that and we can look at the track inspector and stuff okay but let's talk about the nitty gritty of getting decent recordings from contributors around the world. So imagine each and every one of everyone in the chat there from Sweden, Morocco, LA, where else are we? We've got a few more people in there as well. Austin, Texas. Okay. We're all sitting down to do a, a, a podcast together. Okay. So the majority of podcasts that I'll be listening to and the majority of interviews that I'll be listening to on radio shows or podcasts or whatever, it's contributor or host and contributor in the majority of cases. OK, and there is definitely so many things you can be doing to try and bring up your game. OK, first things first, and we talked about it before. I think we talked about the, uh, this in the first show. And I, I kind of tipped through a couple of these things, tips and um, ideas that could help over all the other shows. Um, but let's just embellish them a wee bit more, just so as we know exactly where we're at. OK, great. Netherlands, how are that? Are you well? That's great to see us here. Uh, Esther Wils. So Esther, Michael, Randall, all is out there. Um, first things first Mr. Contributor okay hypothetically speaking I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to do a podcast on I don't know cups mugs because that's my bag I love mugs and I'm going to come up with the best podcast in the whole world about mugs and I'm going to get a huge audience okay <laughs> and it's going to be brilliant and everyone's going to love it well, I can I can feel the awards creaking on my shelves as I speak, right? So I know the best guy in the world that makes mugs. And I'm, the big interview is with Mr. Mug Making Guy. Okay? He's a busy man. Okay? So we can't go to him because he lives somewhere else far, far away. And we can't um, travel to him, okay? So the next best thing to do is record him remotely, okay? So, Denmark, Klaus, James, you're all so welcome. This is great. We're all so international. It's brilliant. Jackpot. Um, sorry, yeah, Mr. Mug Guy that lives far, far away can't come to us. We can't go to him. So we're going to record him remotely. First things first, you set up your interview with them. Okay. Hello, Mr. Mug Guy. Are you around? Yeah, I'm around on the 24th at seven in the evening. And let's do the interview then. Brilliant. 
you write down a few questions you email him the questions he can come up with some ideas he's now confident with his content you're not firing him questions off your off the top of your head that could throw him because first things first an awful lot of people are very 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 nervous in front of a microphone even though it's their own USB microphone they know that microphones connected to a computer going to somewhere and suddenly a lot of people are going to be listening to it so now he's kind of oh. so the more you can do to make him more comfortable or her more comfortable in their situation the better okay so we send off the questions and we say right we'll come in here at 7 o'clock on the 24th and we'll have our interview then okay brilliant everyone's happy loving that We'll kick off the interview at seven o'clock. Doesn't have to be live, okay? So what I was thinking is, if I could call you at 10 to seven, you say to Mr. Mug Guy, why do we have to start so early? Well, there's just a couple of technical things that I would like to check, okay? That seems reasonable. Instead of going, well, I don't want you sounding shite, or excuse me language, but I don't want you sounding really bad, but you know what? I got to keep an eye on you so you just kind of encourage him through that we just want to check a couple of things technically making sure that everything's okay okay now number one thing that I've noticed in all of these shows and whatever else I'm recording and we talked about it before in here and tragically an awful lot of these radio producers still haven't seen show one location location and location okay we've talked about recording your voiceovers or any contributors in the different areas in your house okay and i hear so many interviews and these guys are literally sitting at their kitchen table kitchen table hard surface okay kitchen over there real ringy loads of metal loads of flat hard surfaces loads of high ceilings so we're talking a very echoey kind of sound if you can understand what i mean when i say that i know the pros and the guys that know their stuff from years ago will understand what i'm saying but for you to hear your world in that space what i suggested before as an as just for for um not as an exercise but for an understanding was to get your phone and go and record a piece of speech from whatever Shakespeare from I don't know Seamus Heaney whoever is your favorite get four or five lines go to your bathroom record those into your phone go to your linen closet record those into the same thing same delivery into the phone bedroom same thing downstairs in the living room or something like that and you'll hear the different responses from different rooms and it'll give you a huge understanding of what you should be listening for for that sort of echoey room and you know granted sometimes we can't get away from that 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 is the only place this guy can go okay but it is a massive consideration for you going to record this person your contributor wherever they're going and that's why you're ringing them 10 minutes beforehand if they come across and it's just uh, imagine they're they're performing their interview in a big giant oil tanker that's empty <laughs> you know then we know that we have to say eh, mr mug guy can we please go somewhere else where it's a little quieter okay scheduling your thing is also very important you know if you have Mr. Mug Guy sitting at home at two o'clock and his kids come in from school at five past two and the dog is screaming at the postman and the kids are running around all over the place, that's going to affect his delivery. I say his because we're our imaginary guy. Um, his delivery and the whole performance of the thing. So consider the time as well, okay? But location, location is so important, okay? So if he could go somewhere like a living room, 
with soft furnishings. We're in such better shape than, you know, ringing surfaces all over the place or him doing it in the bathroom, you know, doing his interview in the bathroom. That you got all those super echoes around you. Because it, as much as the tools nowadays are as good to get rid of those and Wavelab Cast has a de-reverber, you know, it can't work miracles, you know, so we need to get it right from the get-go. Okay, so location is so super important. Okay, we can deal with more aspects of that as you guys come up with questions, right? Because we're going to get the questions, aren't we? And then the second most important thing that I've come across, and oh my goodness, I just, I don't understand why, I'll be honest with you, right? I'm not mentioning any names. And don't say it to anyone. This is between yourself and myself. Just the two of us in here, okay? I ended up recording um, a movie remotely. It was a guide track for an animated movie. So in the animated movies, we record a guide track. The guide track goes off. This is, okay, character A says, Oh my goodness, look at the avalanche. And then character B says, Run! And we record the whole thing as a radio play. And that goes off and it gets animated and then they tweak a few things and the animation comes back and we do other stuff, right? Which is great. So we had to record the guide track or the radio play remotely because of all the lockdowns and stuff, right? Um, Randall, amen, my brother. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we had to record it remotely. And... I'm sitting there, we we spent, what, five days recording the movie and I was recording in here, of course, and I had all the actors coming in, okay? Not individually, we recorded them all together, right? With the facilities that I had. And the big thing that killed me every time. Now, these actors had really good microphones plugged into interfaces, and they had good quality audio interfaces that are plugged into good computers. Their signal's coming down to me. I'm picking it up here. I'm recording it into my DAW. Everything should have been sweet as pie. So if you consider four people doing a radio play, they start at the beginning of the scene and they work their way through the scene. Okay. They get to the end and go, how was that? That was brilliant. Okay, we didn't necessarily like your man's go line or his delivery or maybe he fluffed his line. So we'll go for it again. I constantly, constantly, constantly from one specific actor, okay, um, I was getting dropouts. Wi-Fi dropouts. And this is so, so important to an awful lot of your recording if you possibly can okay depending on your machine some machines have some machines don't have but instead of and this this could totally compromise the location argument that we just had or discussion we had see this this is what they call an ethernet lead Okay, and Ethernet is your Wi-Fi going down a hard wire. Okay, so when Wi-Fi is talking to your computer, you're sitting in the front room, your router, your Wi-Fi router is over there somewhere and wirelessly talks to your computer. Okay, now it'll set, your computer will go and check some data. It'll come back to your computer and they'll handshake and say, is that okay with you? Yeah, great. And there's loads of communication going on. Now, your Wi-Fi bandwidth, if you consider a, a tube, um, imagine a, a, a water pipe, okay? Water pipe this much will be able to carry loads of water. You close the size of the water pipe, there's far more pressure and far less water getting through. So... In comparison, we have the Ethernet to Wi-Fi, okay? Wi-Fi is a small pipe. Ethernet is a big pipe. You can get a lot of data shifting through there nice and smoothly, okay? So 
if in any way possible he has his router anywhere close to his desk or something like this, Mr. Mug Guy, our fictitious interviewee, if they can get an Ethernet into their computer, you will lose all those Wi-Fi dropouts. And we've all heard them in interviews. You know, you suddenly you're, you're missing words because whir, that squelched sound and that's gone. OK, now, the thing is, if he isn't anywhere near um, the router, but you asked me to do my um, interview in a room with soft furnishings, so I'm in my bedroom doing that. And the Wi-Fi router is down somewhere in my house and the Wi-Fi signal isn't great. What they might consider, and this this could be a thing for an awful lot of people going forward in that imagine you were setting up a podcast with your pal down the road and you were both contributing to the same podcast. OK. Or listening to the same, contributing to the same podcast. And of course, you can't be in the same room because she's in Massachusetts and I'm here in Dublin or something. OK. Going forward, if you could go out and get something like this, this is what they call a power line adapter. And this is so good for getting a good Ethernet signal to every socket in your house. It's perfectly safe. It won't cause fires. It won't do anything like that. So this machine is paired with another machine. OK, just like this. Now, this is the Wi-Fi version. So this is actually a little Wi-Fi repeater in the room as well which means that you have a much better Wi-Fi signal in the specific room that you are. Now, your router could be, you know, over in the West Wing, if you're so inclined in your mansion, right? <laughs> could be 300 yards that way through 40 thick, thick walls. And you'll still get a great Wi-Fi signal off that in your room. OK, so there's another little they come in pairs. OK, so you buy the um, adapters, the power line adapters. One plugs into the plug um, beside your router and you take an Ethernet out of your router and into it. OK, so now you have one of these wires coming out of your router into the power line adapter in the wall. OK, your socket, you're just your general socket. OK. Then this paired power line adapter, which is the brother or sister of the one that's in the wall, you can plug into any socket in your house if it's on the same electrical circuit. And they're paired, so they, they handshake and they talk to each other. And then all you have to do is take an Ethernet out of this. So I'm clicking that in there. OK, there you go. That goes into your computer. And you have much, much bigger water pipe to deal with with that data. You won't get those squelches. You won't get that Wi-Fi dropout going through your interview. Everyone's comfortable. You're not stopping and starting. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mug Guy, I missed that bit. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mug Guy, I missed that bit. We had a Wi-Fi dropout. Could you just say that again? Now he's starting to get frustrated because of all the dropouts, you know. Because his broadband is only a little dongle of two meg and or something. OK. So those power line adapters are so brilliant for that, for bringing a really decent signal to wherever your computer is, wherever you live. And that, that it's not just for voiceovers and anything. It's for absolutely anything. You know, if you do have a computer at the other end of the house and your signal is awful, you should consider getting a power line adapter. Feed it from your router. You can have 50 of them around the house if you want. One in each room. Because some of us live in those type of houses. <laughs> Not me, I'm afraid. Um, but you know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying to you. Power line adapters, super important for keeping that, wide, that, that bandwidth up. Nice wide bandwidth. Get loads of data, no confusion. If you have a couple of programs open on your computer and they're all feeding off the data, which they shouldn't, you shouldn't be anyway. But anyway, there you go. But that's what I'm saying to you. OK. 
um, they could be a massive help to you. Massive help. Okay. The other thing that I, I, and this is the third thing in, in, in the whole th picture, bigger picture. Generally, people don't know how to use a microphone. Why would you? It's it's such an alien thing, really, unless you're a musician and you kind of been around microphones or stuff or you're a world famous TV presenter or something. But generally, people, people that are coming up with USB microphones and stuff like that, right? If they want to do a podcast, the majority of people are walking out there and going, well, what do I need? I need a USB microphone. So they'll plug it in. And USB microphones don't come with mic stands. They come with these little desk stands. So the microphones are way down on the desk there. Okay. So I'm talking about that much away from my mouth. If I just put a little USB microphone there. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I don't have moving cameras to show you the whole thing. but So the proximity of the voice to the mouth to the microphone it's very 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 large it's very very um, distant should I say so you're not getting that lovely warm you know close radio uh, late night signal coming off the microphone do you understand what I mean so proximity is so super important and, and again, you know, if you have the microphone way down here, you're picking up an awful lot of the room. So again, if you're if you're in your kitchen or your bathroom, you're going to get so much reflection coming through here and making all the voice so muddy and stuff like that. Whereas if you can get a nice proximity for your microphone, your USB microphone, because most of them will take um, a connection to a mic stand. OK. So if you're spending a couple of hundred quid on a USB microphone, do yourself a favor. Go and get a mic stand. OK. And while you're getting a mic stand, make sure you have a pop shield with it. OK. A pop shield is for plosives like peas and bees. OK. And big bangs on the mic all the time, you know. So that's really, really, really handy. And if you can get a, a suspension mount as well, so there's no noise traveling through everything. Because I see an awful lot of these pictures and and, and um, I'm working on a thing at the moment. And I'm looking at a lot of footage of people podcasting. OK, and they're all holding their microphones on the desk. Hold, hold. I'm talking on my on my podcast. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. <laughs> what? Get your hands off that. The amount of noise traveling through the microphone will be all over your recordings. Crazy stuff. OK, so please ignore all those fabulous photographs of people with USB microphones 17 feet because they're down on the desk away from their mouth and they anticipate getting a good signal off that. It's not going to happen. OK, <laughs> let's look at the proximity. Get yourself a nice mic stand. Don't touch it. <laughs> OK. Get your USB microphone. Nice proximity. So we're talking. We get a really good response. We get a lovely proximity going. And we have a lovely sounding voice now going on. OK. That's you in the room, right? Mr. Blogs, Mr. Mug Guy doesn't necessarily have the luxury of having one. A decent USB microphone or a mic stand. But it's always worth having that conversation. You know when you're about to send the script? If you have the conversation about, I don't suppose you'd have a USB microphone with you. Or would one of your pals have a microphone that we could borrow? So as we can get a good response, a good recording response. Now, he's not going to go down to his uh, rock and roll buddies and get himself an SM58 and go, I'm talking into the podcast, you know, because that's not going to happen. There'll be loads of hand noise and stuff. So we need to isolate the microphone as well. Okay, brilliant. Connecticut, Nicholas, 
uh, Kalispera. Greek, yeah. Anyway, looks your name looks a bit Greek. Uh, so yeah, hand through the thing, pops, bangs. So we've asked him to move into a really quiet space. We've used the Ethernet. Now we are in such good shape for getting a really good signal right down into our computer and a clean signal. Okay. So now we're not going back and saying, oh, I just had a pop there. Could we just say that again? Or we just had a Wi-Fi drop out. Could we just say that again? If we just did this and we did that and the other and your man's going, oh, my goodness, this this is. Yeah, <laughs> Calispera. Um, if we could just focus on getting the interview. Because he's he's going to be stressed enough about trying to get a good interview out, you know. Uh, rarely do people just swan in, nice cup of tea in the hand, say, hi, here's my interview. Boom. Ten, 15 minutes later, you have the most concise, beautiful read you've ever seen or heard in your life. And you can put that into your editing suite and then it just goes through. You finish your podcast and boom. Not going to happen, lads. Not going to happen, you know. So you need to make this person as comfortable as possible. So if we can reduce one, the bangs, the pops, Wi-Fi dropouts, handling noise through the microphone and the proximity that they're in. These are all real considerations that you should think about. Take your phone, take your own mobile phone. OK, hit record, go into the bathroom, kitchen, living room, do that little read and and understand what each room does. And how you can try and reduce that. Okay. Find the best sounding room in your house. For recording your stuff as well. Okay. We have California. We have Moscow. Well we are all over this tonight. Ah lads. So great to see us all here today. Okay brilliant. I had. Oh yeah the other point was right. And I wanted to bring this in. When I say about my phone. Okay. Um. Most people, most people will have um, a voice recorder or some sort of little app on their phone, on their mobile phone, if they're lucky enough to have a mobile phone in the first place, right? If they can't get the Ethernet thing going, okay? If the only option they have is a little dongle that is one meg and that's it, okay? Or something, okay? Are working off mobile data, whatever the situation is or the conditions that they have to work to. What I will always suggest to people is we're going to start the interview at seven o'clock. OK. Brilliant. You've noticed that he has a few Wi-Fi dropouts. OK. You also notice that he's not he's talking over the microphone in his laptop. OK, so there's that distance to the laptop and the laptop microphone. OK, so proximity is not a great idea. Now, if you're not shooting picture, if you're not filming the interview via Zoom or some versions of Meet, Google Meet or Teams, uh, uh, can you record? Can you record your meetings in Teams? I'm not too sure. Um. I'm sure you can. I, I don't work with teams an awful lot. But anyway, uh, that's an aside. What I would ask you to ask them to do. Grab your phone. Grab your app that you record the phone in and say, OK, Mr. Our fictitious uh, mug making person. OK, if you grab your phone and record the interview at the same time. It would be super if you could send us the file after. This could go into the email that you're sending the questions over with. So this is a week or two beforehand. So now you've given them time to go, all right, they want me to record that on, on, um, on my phone. What do I need to do that? So he could give you a call and you go, just get such and such an app. And then you'd be able to record the interview. OK, brilliant. So when they're about to do their interview with you, 
you go because uh, I'm talking through Zoom or um, whichever yoke you decide on I have some suggestions for you as well because anyway we've a lot to talk about there so Mr. Mug Guy, our fictitious interviewee, goes into his phone. He puts the phone in aeroplane mode. Okay? And that's super important because you don't want that GSM digital going all over the most important sentence of the whole interview. Okay? Put the phone into um, airplane mode. Hit record on your... Um, voice recorder or dictaphone or voice memo app that you have on your phone and ask him just to hold it there and while he's doing his interview with you or maybe you could put it up on a pile of books or on a which would probably be a better idea to be honest with you because then you don't get handling noise through the phone and he's recording the whole thing with you and you're all talking, you're doing your interview and oh yeah, it's great to talk about mugs. Uh, I started making mugs 500 years ago and love mugs, you know. So not only are you avoiding the Wi-Fi dropouts, the really awful sound from his laptop microphone, but you're getting somewhat more decent recording from your mo from the mobile phone that he has in front of him here okay when you finish the interview just hit stop okay and ask him to share that file with you so now you have a really clean version on your phone um, uh, on his phone and they can email that to you straight away or upload it to whatever Dropbox Drive wherever it is and you can pick that up and you have a really clean version but you have the original version in your original recording okay so the scenario is you're recording your zoom meeting you got the wi-fi drop in it's the really awful sound but you have your recording going on in there his recording now you have a guide track as soon as you get that file bring it into Wavelab Cast, and you can shift the two of his files in sync. Now you can lose the awful one. You've got the really good quality one from, well, better quality one from the phone, and you've got your lovely recording underneath. Now you can start editing that. Now you've got a much better sounding interview, and it's not cutting people's ears off, and it's not, ah, you know, and you're retaining your uh, your your audience. The conversation is going well. It's comfortable to listen to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why I'd say to you, if you could use the phone as well in those situations where he can't get Ethernet, where he can't get a decent microphone, um, it'd be really, really, really advantageous. Because I'm seeing so much um, content, webinars, podcasts, all these things. And people are just shouting their heads off in really big rooms with microphones miles away from them. And you're going, I can't hear what you're saying to me. And this is so uncomfortable. I'm just moving away. And they wonder why they're not getting the audiences they should be. You know. So these are all considerations that you should be looking at. Okay. When you take yourself away from this show, have a look back at it in a few days' time or in a couple of weeks, just to refresh what's going on in your head, especially if you have an interview coming up. Maybe a little bit of a checklist. What did Alexander, uh, Keith said, uh, this A, B, C, D and E. Okay, brilliant. I'll check the Wi-Fi. I'll check the room. I'll check the microphone. Pop shield. Handling noise. Did, what did he say about the phone? Just come back in here and have a listen. Okay? Now you have a checklist that you can reference. You can put into the email. Would you be able to get a microphone? Would you be able to get a phone? Could put it into airplane mode. And give him loads of headroom. Give your interviewee loads of headroom for 
not them panicking. Oh, gee, I can't get my phone working. I can't do this. I can't do it. Don't worry about it. We just want the best performance out of you and the best quality audio. Okay, brilliant. Another thing that I, I, I need to address with you guys is how you get your interviews. Okay. So there's stuff out there like Zoom, Google Meet, um, Teams. Okay. Um, there's other stuff. Uh, Steinberg, if you're doing a, a one-to-one, and especially for musicians as well, Steinberg do this thing called VST Connect. And it's a one-on-one -on -one connection you send the the other person a little client a little piece of software they just download it for free install it in their computer select their sound card and it's such good quality and it goes straight into your studio or into your computer or you on the other end you control the whole thing you can see each other really really worth checking out brilliant absolutely brilliant anyway that that's just connecting people to people right the most accessible way to have a meeting with somebody is with this Google Meet or with Zoom. Now, there's a couple of things there. With Google Meet, you have to have a certain plan with Google that'll allow you to record your meetings. So if you've got a free account or certain workspaces, I think it's they call it workspaces, you don't get the option to record your Google Meets. Now, I stand to be corrected, but, and the other thing is, keep an eye on your clients, keep an eye on your Zoom software, keep an eye on your Meet software on your phone, keep, just keep them updated because the amount, these, the functions change daily, you know what I mean? They get a brilliant idea, they put it up there, suddenly you get start getting used to it, that's a brilliant function, suddenly, no, nobody's using it, and they pull it and you go, ah, you know, so, you know, keep an eye on those things as well, you know, you, just to make sure that you have all the functionality that you're used to in your workflow. OK, <laughs> scary. So Google Meet only has certain plans, but Zoom brought in a fabulous little um, uh, function for recording your meetings and for podcasters and content creators this is so super good i want to show you this right so go on to zoom you download the free client okay we're not i'm not affiliated with zoom at all right lads so i'm just saying to you that this functionality is so handy now there is a little something in here that i really want you to be aware of before you go and start recording any interviews or anything like this and it's super important because you'll lose an awful lot of your recordings okay just to let you know so imagine i went over here okay so i'm looking at my wave lab cast i'm just going to pull up zoom if you will there's zoom okay can you guys all see that um and then we got what I want you to do is go up to here. If you look at preferences, okay? In preferences, if you look at the recording tab, see this, record a separate audio file for each participant. This is absolutely brilliant. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And you know why? I was playing with this with the lads, two of my kids today. I was testing it out because I hadn't seen this function before. Again, they bring in these features and, you know, sometimes they disappear. Sometimes they should disappear. But, you know, let me show you what this does. You can select where you want those files to go. OK, so as soon as you stop the meeting, um, it converts the temporary files into files that you can read. All right. So currently they're set to documents and Zoom on that setup right well you can you can put your files anywhere you want you see uh where is it uh add timestamp da, da, da. choose a location to save the recording after the meeting ends so as soon as you finish your interview or your meeting you click end for all and it, you get a little pop-up and it says where do you want to put your files you select your area they they'll say um initially it's uh, it's the default area okay which is document zoom in this specific machine. Um, 
but you click on the little drop down and you get an option to choose where you want to put them. So if you have an audio drive attached to your machine, choose the audio drive, put them in somewhere nice that you know where they are, right? Now let me show you what that does. Because generally, and the majority of all of these meeting software packages all record in stereo, left and right. That's it, two channels, okay? Not necessarily, yeah, two channels, okay? So if I'm saying something, I'm talking, 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 he interrupts, you get all that recording on just two tracks. So if there's any crosstalk, you don't have access to the individual's individual audio files. Or if there's three people talking. Now let me show you that why that is so good, okay? I'm going to flick over to... Where? There. Brilliant. There's the three files that I recorded this morning, okay, with the lads. Now... There were three participants and it recorded three audio files. See that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have a track here and that's in mono. You can see that there. Okay. I'm going to add a track mono and I got another mono. So I have three mono tracks and I'm going to go and drag these down here like this. Okay. Yeah, it'll do the conversion from MP4. Uh, M4A or whatever it is. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, am I in here? Yeah, yeah. And I can drag this. Whoops, excuse me. I'm dragging that up there. And if I go out here, there's my other file. And I'm dragging that there. Okay, so look at this. They're all the exact same length. And of course, that file is me. That file is... Let's have a listen. No. Eva, my daughter. And this file is Manus. The prequel and the... <laughs> He's the grumpiest teenager you ever met. Anyway, um, so we have all three conversations individually. If I solo that, I can just play this. Okay. Saying about that computer game you were talking about the other day. Okay, so you see how clean that is. So if Ava talks, okay, I'm just going to zoom in here, okay? Zoom, 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 zoom. Computer game you were talking about the other day. Which one? Uh, can you see that? There's his waveform. So I'm talking here. Ba, 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 ba. Borderlands. Uh, it's the handsome... Let me show you that my big head is in the way. Sorry about that, lads. It's Badlands. Ba, 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 ba. Borderlands. Uh, it's the handsome collection which compiles. Okay. So I'm just going to solo that. Uh, the, pre the prequel and the sequel. Uh, it also gives you. So that, that's a perfect example of somebody recording off a laptop as well. Okay. Just to, you can hear the difference. Listen to this. What were you saying about that computer game you were talking about the other day? Lovely, nice, clean recording, etc. So I have each contributor individually. I can get in and I can record each part and I have all that separation. So I've brought that into Wavelab Cast. Okay. I do a really quick edit on this whole interview. So I think I was really getting hear sound noise. and I seem to be more. Do you hear that? I'm just going to solo that there. Did you hear that? That's Wi-Fi dropout and Wi-Fi interference. Okay, listen to Eva here. Do you hear that's all muffled down because of the Wi-Fi dropout in the room? She was on a laptop, he was on a laptop. It wasn't an extraordinary um, technical achievement by any means. We just wanted to get these three tracks recorded. Okay. So the great thing about this is we've recorded all of our tracks in Zoom. We got each individual recording. Using the tips that I'm that I'm saying to you here 
about the room, about the microphones, about all sorts of stuff. Okay. Um, it'll be a real boon if you manage to get all these lovely clean recordings into the same space. Now you can start doing your edit. Okay. So what's the point in having, oh, oh I got to show you this as well. So in Zoom, okay, imagine I'm in Zoom and I have a meeting, okay? If I go, I'm just setting this up, I'd probably blow up the whole thing. But imagine I go to here just to let you see this, okay? Uh, excuse the picture, lads. See this original sound on, okay? That was originally about uh, turning off Zoom's processing. OK, so naturally, uh, naturally in Zoom, they have noise suppressors and stuff like that, that they use to keep the voice a little cleaner and you can keep original sound on or off. Just click on that and it turns it off. So it should, in theory, knock off all their processing. So for musicians and stuff like that, that's why they brought it in anyway. I did notice when you're doing a multi-track recording, and this is so super important. Watch this. Original sound off. And now I'm turning original sound on. Are you guys getting me louder or quieter? Can you hear that? So when original Can you see the waveform? I seem to be much quieter. Now I'm turning off original sound and I seem to be much louder to you guys. I'm turning off original sound and I seem to be much louder to you guys. So I just found that very funky today in that if you turn the original sound on, if you're recording those three, five, ten tracks of each individual in contributor in your podcast, you will lose you hugely. They won't be able to hear you as much. OK. Now, I don't know whether that's just because I was the host or what the situation is, but it's something to be super aware of. OK, if you're recording remotely. OK. Super important. OK. Why do I want those three tracks? Why wouldn't I just play them out in a stereo file? Because remember those little Wi-Fi dropouts and the little squelches and stuff like that going on. So have a listen to this. Each and every stream here. So each and every person in the room is being recorded. So let me just play that for you again. OK, so that's in the room with Eva. Yeah, so I should be doing some housekeeping here. I'm going to double click on that. Go Keith, same way. Eva and Manus. OK, don't forget, you can also change the color. That's my host. This is my. Let's go green. And we can. Change the track color. Let's go purple on that. Now we have a good visual on what we should be doing. As I zoom out, you can see the interviews going on lovely there. OK, there's a bit of chat. OK, it's, have you uh, played this, Eva? No. Well, if you were going to play a computer game, Eva, what would be your favorite computer game to play? Rather not computer games. <laughs> <laughs> House full of teenagers. What? Unbelievable. So I don't want all that playing at that time. OK. So I select the area, hit backspace, and it gets rid of that dirt. I go here, I get rid of that dirt, hit backspace, okay, or delete. Is that backspace or delete? I'm not sure what that is. So I get a much cleaner feed going on now, okay? Zoom in here. Let's go to a section around here. I can see a couple of glitches going on there. Do you see that? So let me just hit play. Computer games. Oh, would you like to add something to that, Manus? Because I just need some sort of crosstalk from the three of us. She's fucking. 
<laughs> he's playing his guitar and he's oh, I'm not having any of it. So I just select that area, go backspace. I go here, I go backspace. Now the only thing that's playing is me. I don't like computer games. Oh, would you like to add something to that, Manus? Because I just need... So he could be playing his guitar, twang, twang, because you could hear it there. Now I'm losing all the dirt underneath what's going on with each contributor. So where Manus is, I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit backspace. Now the only thing playing there is Manus. Okay. So let me find somewhere where the three of us are talking. Because you don't know how hard it is just to get two teenagers talking. <laughs> Their frontal lobe will develop and then we'll get actual conversations out of them. And that show should be in, in the next couple of years. All right, lads. Anyway, so there's talking. You don't want to <laughs> no. go down to the music shop or you don't want the cake? I don't need anything for the man, though. Okay, so that's okay. And Eva, what sort of cake? So do you see him talking there? Let's just select that area. Hit backspace. She's giggling in the background there, so I'm just going to hit backspace. And now we have a much cleaner response going on. All we're getting there is Manus, backspace. So, you don't want to <laughs> yeah. go down to the music shop or you don't want the cake? I don't need anything for the man, though. Okay, so that's okay. And Okay, so that's just so super simple. I'm just going to go there as well because there's a big breath in the way. So, do you see how simple that is? And that is such a brilliant facility coming from Zoom. And the fact that it's so easy to get your individual tracks, each contributor, you could have one full recording of them and nip out all the dirt and the pops and the M's and the O's and the A's. Because if they're all married into a, a stereo file, it's so difficult to try and keep everything so nice and neat and clean and clipped and gorgeous okay gorgeous um okay way of love any plans on providing virtual camera options so that we can use it with obs zoom or other live video stream options which are unquestionably covert era standard okay another little piece of kit that you should look at and uh, scare it, okay? If you're going from Zoom or uh, Skype or <laughs> Skype? Skype? Does that even exist anymore? Look, <laughs> I'm showing me age now. Any of these things, if you're looking at those, you can feed um, your Google Meet audio directly into wave lab cast what you need is what they call a virtual driver okay which is literally just a, a virtual wire a lead you plug it in out of google meet teams wherever software you're using it goes round in the back in the hidden realms of your computer and it plugs into the back of your wave lab cast okay so let me show you how that sets up. Can I go back to here? Listen, I'll go to Zoom, okay? Get rid of your man's ugly mug. End meeting for all. Go to your preferences again, okay? Go to audio. Can you guys see that? Ah, uh, hello. See the way my Zoom is set up there and you can see my microphone. There's your microphone, which is my Steinberg. And my speakers are, in theory, um, where, where the, sorry, I got distracted there. I lost, I lost me visuals because you can't see that now. I'm just going over here. Now we can. So I've gone into, let me show you that again. I've gone back into Zoom. I'm going up here to preferences. And again, this is the same for Zoom, for Meet, for, I just don't have Meet loaded up okay and i don't want it to affect my my um streamer anyway okay 
So you're looking at that. With this Steinberg test speaker, you'll get speakers options in your Teams, in your Google Meet, in your Skype, in your everything. And look at this. See this piece of this thing here? It's called VB Cable, which is a virtual driver. OK, now, if you go onto the VB Cable website, you can buy certain um, uh, drivers often that is paid and you can also get um, a free version. OK, there's other connection softwares and other virtual drivers out there that um, are available commercially. And man, they are so expensive. It's unbelievable. Um, but this VB cable, you can you can buy a legacy or you can get a legacy version for free. And then there's other versions out there that give you more functionality and it only costs you a couple of dollars. It's donation where um, for whoever's coding these things. Brilliant. So you get the VB cable and you go to Steinberg or you don't go to Steinberg, you go down here to VB Cable, which means that I have now got the output of my um, Zoom or Google Meet or whatever going into that virtual lead going out the back of my meeting software. OK, let me show you what happens there. I'm going to get Zoom over here for a second. And then I'll get Imagine I just set up a new one just for giggles, right? Because uh, then you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going there and I'm going to go custom and I'll go there and I'll go stereo and it's going to be deadly. And um, oh, yeah, the other thing to do in here is go to your preferences, go to audio connections and go VB cable. OK, so that's taking the wire into Wave Lab cast. OK, OK. Yeah, testing. OK, we'll just throw that there. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to stop that because, you know, what? I didn't want a what did I want? I wanted I didn't want a montage. I wanted an audio file. Ha! So I created that. This is just to show you because I want to show you these. OK, you can name your file, write test and we can put it somewhere anyway. But if I go into my Zoom preferences, OK, I don't know whether I'll be able to get the both of these up on the same window, lads, but we'll try. We'll try. OK, so I'm back into my preferences. You can see my microphone there. OK, I'm going to test my speaker. So let me just go back to there. Now you can see your signal coming into Wave Labcast. Can you see that? That's that audio playing out into Wave Labcast. Now, in the reality of the world, OK, um, in any DAW on the planet, you have to set your audio card. You're in and you're out of um, your Wavelab cast or your Nuendo or your Wavelab Pro. You need to set your audio connections. Go to preferences and select your interface or your virtual in and out or your hardware in and out. There's your built in audio from the computer and stuff. OK, OK. The only thing about that is you won't be able to monitor what's going into Wave Labcast. And that's the same with every DAW on the planet. OK, you get a machine to go in and out. And if you're going with a virtual driver, the virtual driver has no way of playing out to, you know, an audio card or whatever. So that's the only hindrance in that. OK, but you can set your levels beforehand to give yourself a fair amount of headroom. So scare it. That's kind of how you do it. OK, so if you need to get your Google Meet, Teams, Zoom, whatever, into your wave lab cast then you need a virtual driver and you can download that virtual driver for free and it is solid as a rock i mean it's i've used it a few times in an awful lot of applications excuse me um and it's solid as a rock and it's as clean as a whistle 
Okay. So that's the way forward for you. You know. We'll be looking at, you know, nipping and tucking dialogue um, and a few more aspects of Wave Lab Cast the next time. Because we have a lot to get through. And what I'd love you to do is to download the demo and have a play. Try and record something. Try and bring in some audio files. Do you see how I brought those in? Okay, let me just show you there, right? If I go to my original Zoom test, that's the edit we did. Here, look. That's the edit we did, okay? Up here, see your file browser? I can go to volumes and I can see all the drives connected to my machine, okay? I'm going to go to documents. I'm going to go to Zoom because we recorded those today. There's the first meeting we had today, audio record. And there's those three files again. So... You got these up here, okay? There's all the clips that are involved in this specific montage, okay? And then you get your spectroscope because I hit that and that plays there like that. So you can go to your file browser and drag out any files you want into your workspace, okay? So when you get your demo, try and find an audio file on your computer, drag it in there, maybe a piece of music, then record a bit of speech. Don't forget you click on here. I'm going to set up a new track. Add track, mono, okay. Okay, I have to make sure that my audio preferences are set, audio connections. We're gonna to go to Steinberg U or 28M, which is my interface, okay. I'm gonna go down here and there's that track that I just recorded. So this is my VO, okay, my voiceover. I'm going in here, input one, and in theory, I should see my direct monitoring there. And it's all ready to take my voice. I hit record, and there I say, hello, 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 and then we should be good to go. Okay. Now you grab in a piece of music, and you can start editing whatever you want to edit. Scared saying something to me. Audio into meetings, however, this gives me a ton of great ideas for bi-directional. You can use it either way, scare it. You can use it either way. That's what I'm saying to you. It's a virtual driver. So if you needed to feed, uh, that's what I'm using um, to feed my broadcast software from uh, WaveLabCast. So I go from WaveLabCast to my broadcast software via a virtual driver. So you can set it up either way or any way. Um, so one going in there and, you know, coming back out. So that allows me play what I have in my WaveLab cast to you guys. So you can hear what I'm doing online. But because I'm setting the interface for WaveLab cast as a virtual driver, I can't select this microphone to record into it. It needs, and every other DAW on the planet needs, one solid piece of kit for in and out. You can't have virtual driver and my UR that's taking my microphone feed. It's just it's just the way of the world, you know? Um, sorry, live stream, da, 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 Keith again. Share it to Twitter, Keith again, thank you. Share it to Twitter, Keith again, thank you. Okay, Wayne Oaks, how's it going, buddy? How are you doing? Good to see you here, man. Um, brilliant. Scare, I'm, oh, you shared this stream to Twitter, did you? Fair play to you. Thanks very much. <laughs> I'm famous. <gasps> brilliant. Listen, lads, I'm going to go because I'm running over. Virtual cables are great. You're right there. Wayney, are you just in? Because I'm just about to go, man. We'll have to have a chat again. Come in next time. We'll have a chat then. Wayne is great. He comes and he's developing his own show online. Um, so he's got loads of learning for us as well as regards editing and working on your audio for your own content. Brilliant. Love, 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 love. Guys, that was a pure joy. I'm so happy to see so many in here from all over the place. It's like... Wow, thanks a million, lads. 
That was brilliant from all over the world. Every continent we covered almost. There was a couple of penguins coming from Antarctica there. <laughs> <laughs> they were texting in as well anyway that was brilliant lads thank you so much um, yeah drop us a line come on in the next time I'll put up over the next couple of days when the next show is going out and we'll come up with whatever subject matter you want in the meantime in the meantime if there's anything that you guys need to to um, have discussed okay with Wave Lab Cast put it into the comments okay slant you <laughs> uh, put it into the comments okay I'll check it out when you guys are watching this back and then we'll address whatever you want addressed um, next time yeah so Gurmila Skerrit right that's Gaelic or Irish um, language stuff um, Michael thanks a million everyone um Thank you so much for joining in. This was a, a pure joy. I hope you got loads from it. If you need me to clarify, reiterate anything, ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you next time. All right. So I'll put up a reminder. Set your reminder on the link. And if you subscribe to the, the Wave Lab uh, channel, then you'll get a reminder when we're on next. And we'll go through another couple of aspects of this super duper little kit. Get the demo. Have fun. We'll be looking at editing to picture as well. Don't forget. Because you can bring picture into Wave Livecast. So if you're a content creator for YouTube. Man. The things you can do to make your audio bang on. Okay. So happy days. I've run over. Big time as always. Anyway. So lovely to see you guys. Um, I'm going to go and sign off. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. So take it easy out there. And we'll see you sooner than later. Bye bye.